Hey guys, Travis Gillespie here. We've been looking at different types of functions and now we're jumping right into quadratic functions. And a couple things I wanna state as reminders here. Remember when you're looking at the function, x is raised to the second power. So you have a, a power of two. Um, also, the graph that's created is a curved line that's either facing upward, it's facing upward, uh, or it's facing downward, depending on the function that you're given. Also, that that uh, that curved line, it's it's called a parabola. So your graph, it's called a parabola, and it could either be um, wide or narrow, also depending on the function that you're given. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into a couple of problems here. And I'm gonna keep it simple. So let's say, what if x is negative two, negative one, zero, one, or two? So what I'm gonna do is substitute these values in for the function here. Okay, so I have negative two when x is negative two. Uh, so f of negative two, I'm gonna write that down over here, f of negative two. And so basically what I'm doing is substituting negative two in for x. So f of negative two, well that's telling me I have negative two, negative two uh, squared. And notice I place the parentheses around negative two because I'm substituting negative two in for x. I'm gonna place parentheses around it. And it's really important when you're raising a negative value uh, to a power. So here, here's what I'm getting at here is if I have negative two, raised to the second power, that's telling me to take uh, negative two, negative two, and multiply it by itself. Negative two times negative two, and that gives me positive four. But if I were to forget to put parentheses around that, or place the parentheses in the wrong spot, well, let's just say I have negative two raised to the second power. This is actually telling me, right here, this is telling me, this is the same thing as saying, well, I have, I'm gonna fix that arrow real quick. So that's saying I have negative one, times two to the second power. That's what this is really saying. So this is telling me to take two and multiply it by itself. Two times two will give me a value of four, and then I'm gonna take four and multiply it by that negative one, which will give me negative four in the long run. So uh, just be careful when you're housing um, the value that you're substituting in for a variable, housing it inside the parentheses. Um, so now I have negative two squared, and I'm going to add one to it. I'm actually gonna, uh, maybe I'll just keep it up for now. So here's my first uh, setup. Well, we already found out negative two squared is four, and I'm gonna take four and add it to one. So f of negative two, f of negative two is equal to four plus one is five. So f of ne when x is negative two, f of negative two is positive five when I'm gonna actually just box that information up. All right, now we have when x is negative one, so f of, f of negative one is equal to, well, negative one squared, I'm gonna put parentheses around negative one, plus one. So negative one to the second power, well that just, it's basically one, negative one times negative one, or negative one times itself gives you one. So one plus one in this case, and let's fix that one. So one plus one. So f of negative one is equal to two. So when x is negative two, f of x, or f of negative one in this case is positive two. In fact, I said when x is negative two, I think. When x is negative one, f of negative one is positive two. And I forgot to box that up, so let's go ahead and just put a board around that. All right, so f of zero, I like this one, f of zero. So now I have zero raised to the second power plus one. So zero raised to uh, yeah, zero times itself, zero times itself, it's basically nothing. And I'm left with f of zero is equal to positive one. So we have positive one. And again, box that up. So now f of one f of one is equal to one squared 
plus 1. All right, so f of 1 is equal to, well, 1 times itself is 1 plus 1. So simply f of 1, f of 1. In fact, I'm just going to erase that. f of 1 is equal to 2. And again, box that up. All right, finally, f of 2, f of 2, it's equal to 2 squared plus 1. All right, so 2 times itself or 2 squared is 4 plus 1. We find that f of 2 is equal to 5. Okay, so it's kind of cool here. Uh, you kind of see a mirroring effect. Um, in fact, we'll, we'll look at that in the graph as well. But when x is negative 2, or when x is positive 2, uh, f of x, or that y value, you can think of it as y, is positive 5. When x is negative 1 or positive 1, its corresponding value is positive 2. And then um, we're going to graph this information. All right, so draw that coordinate plane. Let's just do one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I'll just do one, two. All right, so each tick mark represents one unit in each direction. So uh, from here, I'm just going to change colors and graph that. Again, I'm going to think of f of x as a y value. So my x and corresponding y value. So when x is negative 2, y is positive 5. So negative 2, positive 5. It's going to be somewhere around here. All right, when x is negative 1, y is 2. So x is negative 1, y is 2. All right, when x is 0, y is 1. When x is positive 1, y is 2. x is positive 1. Notice here that, that my y value corresponds to the uh, y value for, for negative 1. OK, and now finally, when x is 2, positive 2, uh, y is 5. I want to just make sure that I get that graphed relatively in the same position. So it looks like this is actually not as pretty as I'd like it to be. Um, in fact, I'm going to get rid of that last dot and just move it in just a little bit. In fact, I think I need to lower it some too. All right. So from here, all I have to do is draw a line uh, through these points. And what we'd see here, uh, a couple of cool things. So in fact, this is probably the toughest part. And I'm going to see if I can just draw a line. There we go. All right. So connecting through the points in this curve, it's moving upward. It's going to continue to move upward. All right, so it's moving upward. And a, a, a cool effect here, what I could actually do is go back to the function. Um, since my coefficient, that's the value that's in front of x, it's hidden right now. It's a positive 1. Since, since that's a positive number, I actually know that my parabola or my graph here, that curve, it's going to be moving upwards since this is a positive value. Um, that's one way to determine if you have a positive uh, parabola, or, or not, uh, not a positive parabola, an upward facing parabola. I'm going to get rid of that, that one there. Uh, a couple of other things to talk about in, in this parabola. Well, the lowest point. It's called my vertex. So again, the vertex can be either the minimum or maximum value of a parabola, depending on the shape of that parabola or the direction it's facing. Since it's facing upward, it's going to be the minimum point. And the minimum point here is at 0, 1. So the minimum point, the vertex is 0, 1. I could make a note here if I wanted to. This is my vertex. And I'm going to just fix that x.